A woman bought a number of items for $60. She realized that if she bought 60 more items for the same money, she would have paid $12 less per item. How many items did she buy? Okay, so we need to write, start writing down uh, what we know and what we need to find out. Um, so we know, we, we know that the number of items that you buy multiplied by whatever the price is is, well in this case it's going to be $60. So if I let um, n be the price, or n be the number of items, and p be the price, then I get a little equation. Alright, and then we also have some information um, that if she had bought 16 more items, so that's n plus 16, she would have paid $12 less, so P minus $12 less per item. But overall, she would have spent the same amount of money. So that gives us an equation, but we have two variables in here. We have an N and we have a P. Um, so we need to find a way to eliminate one of those. So if we go back to this equation, which is just saying the number of items you buy times the price gives you um, your final cost. So we have NP equals 60. I can actually solve this for P and get P equals 60 over N. So $60 divided by however many you, items you bought gives you the price. So we're going to replace P with 60 over N. And then I have an equation with just one variable. We're going to minimize that. <clears throat> All right, so if I start foiling out the left side, n times 60 over n is just 60. 16 times 60 over n is 960 over n. n times, or 16, no, n times negative 12 would be negative 12n and n times um, 60, oh we already did that, sorry, 16 times negative 12, I keep getting lost in this problem, is uh, negative 192. <clears throat> All right, so that equals 60. <coughs> and if we combine our like terms, 60 minus 192 would be negative 132. And to solve this problem, um, we're going to need to have one side. Well, we have, actually, we probably wouldn't know that yet. We might not recognize that yet. So let's just go ahead and um, we, we don't want our variable to be down in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply both sides by n to get, get it out of the denominator. And we get negative 132n plus 960 minus... 12n squared equals 60n. Okay, so now we can see that it's a quadratic equation that we're solving, and you're probably not surprised by that. So I want to get all of my, I want all of one side to be zero and everything else on the other side. So I'm going to subtract 60n on both sides, and that's going to be negative 192n plus 960 minus 12n squared equals zero. Sorry, my zero, I ran out of room for the zero. All right, at this point I wanna put it in the right order. So I'm gonna write it as negative 12n squared minus 192 plus 960. You know, descending order. And I would, you know, you never know, but this, I don't really want this negative 12 here, so maybe I can divide everything by negative 12. And it turns out in this case you can, so that makes it easier. I get n squared plus 16n uh, minus 960 divided by 12 minus 80 equals 0. And now we have a much simpler 
um, quadratic equation to solve. So this factors nicely for us. n times n is n squared. Uh, 20 and 4 will give us 80. And of course we want to have one of them be negative, so I want my negative to be on the 4 because I want a positive 16 when I'm done. So we get n equals negative 20, which doesn't make any sense. We can't have negative 20 items and n equals 4. So the number of items in this case was 4.